My claws gripped at the scorched earth, the rough granules filtering through the gaps, each grit a testament to the fiery chaos that unfolded moments ago. The air crackled with lingering energy, the stench of ionized ozone and burnt propellant sharp like a physical wound against my nostrils. A pained whimper escaped me as my strength gave way, and I slumped back against the charred trunk of what once must have been a grand, towering tree. My vision swam, pulsating with a rhythm not dissimilar to the frantic beat my hearts hammered out against my ribs. Three hearts, all struggling to keep my circulatory system fighting, to buy me time, but even I knew it was a losing battle. It seemed almost ironic, that on a planet so far from home, in a war I never fully understood, this would be where I'd fall. Not in some glorious act of bravery, no fabled final stand, but bleeding out under the indifferent gaze of twin alien suns. I was still just a fledgling, barely a rotation past my emergence from the brood nest. Yet, here I was, light years from the familiar scent of my birth world, the comforting hum of the hive, dispatched to a relentless battle on the furthest edge of our burgeoning empire. Every instinct screamed at me to burrow, to hide in darkness, but there was nowhere to go but the scorched soil beneath my claws. I was alone, and the realization of that was a far heavier shroud than any physical cloak. A choked sob tore itself free from my throat. We were told the enemy was barbarous, unthinking, monstrous creatures, that was the word they used. It was to be a swift extermination, a swift conquest, another notch on the ever-expanding belt of our kind. Only, that wasn't what we found. The enemy. These humans they called them. They fought hard. Harder than any of our simulations prepared us for. They fought with a ferocity we never imagined resided in such soft, bipedal forms. Our claws and mandibles were potent, our exoskeletons near impenetrable, but every time we engaged the humans, they managed to hurt us, to end us. I thought back to my cohort. Kari, always at my flank, her iridescent shell gleaming even in the dim light of transit ships, now just a shattered ruin in the crater a few paces from my resting spot. Or Vera, with her gentle clicking that belied the lethal speed of her lunge, reduced to ash that drifted in the meager breeze. I was the only one left. The last of my brood. Another wave of pain washed over me, an inferno in my abdomen. When the blast had thrown me clear, I barely had the sense to check my injuries before scrambling for cover. Now, the adrenaline was ebbing, replaced with the grim certainty of my condition. My internal fluids were leaching out, turning the soil into a dark, glistening mud. Vital organs were damaged, perhaps beyond repair. It was a wound an older warrior might have survived with proper care. But for me, with no support and scant supplies, it was agonizingly final. Despair was an emotion my kind did not experience. We functioned as a collective, each individual a mere cell in a greater body. Yet, at this moment, facing a lonesome void, an emptiness that threatened to consume me whole felt frighteningly similar to the human concept. Above, I heard it, the thrumming that had been a constant in the skies since the battle began. It drew nearer, and I tilted my head to see a monstrous aerial contraption of human design descending. A deep growl rumbled at the back of my throat, a mix of resignation and defiance. So this was how it would end. I tensed my muscles, ready to make even a wounded member of my kind a costly prize to claim. The craft settled a short distance away, metal legs grinding into the ravaged earth. A hatch slid open with a hiss, and my eyes narrowed, expecting the usual rush of those armored figures, weapons raised. Instead, what emerged was. Different. This human was smaller, clad not in the hard, bulky plates the others wore, but in softer fabrics, a faded green color. No weapon was readily visible, and even their stance, as they descended the ramp their craft had extended, had none of the aggressive posture of a combatant. They carried a small case in one hand, the other held up in what I had come to learn was a human gesture of nonviolence. My head tilted in confusion. Were they so arrogant they'd send someone unarmed, intending to capture me alive? Or was it a tactic I was simply unequipped to comprehend? Regardless, my options were limited. I could lunge with my remaining strength, attempt a last desperate strike, or I could wait and see how this played out. It was not in me to simply curl up and accept my fate, but at the moment a fighting end seemed a distant hope. I would not make this easy for them. As the human grew closer, I could make out more detail. A female, if the softer contours of her body were any indication. 
Her skin was a smooth, light tone, and she was topped with a mess of short, dark hair, an unusual contrast to the almost uniform appearance of the warriors I'd faced. Her eyes, exposed in a way most of the humans I'd seen weren't, were wide and a peculiar shade of blue, like some of the atmospheric specimens collected on less hostile worlds. She stopped a short distance away, studying me, her gaze flicking between my trembling form and the viscous mess spreading around me. A grimace flickered across her face, followed by a sound I couldn't place, a soft clicking emerging from her mouth. Perhaps an expression of pity? Or maybe a sound of triumph meant to demoralize me, as predators might do when facing a wounded quarry. Whatever it was, I found I didn't much care. What could she do to me that my current situation wasn't already in the process of doing? She approached with slow, deliberate steps, the strange clicking sounds continuing. Each time I tensed, ready to recoil or lash out, she'd pause, raise those empty palms again, and make more of those noises. With a frustrated hiss, I sank lower, resting my mandibles in the dirt. I'd be taken, studied, experimented on perhaps, I had heard stories of their scientists' cruelty. But at the very least, my suffering would soon end. Perhaps whatever awaited me would be a fate worse than expiration on this forsaken field, but my strength was depleted. I could fight no more. The human was suddenly directly in front of me. I saw her crouch, a risky move to place herself so within my reach, but she seemed to have judged my near collapse more astutely than I had. Her eyes fixed on mine, and I met her gaze, seeing no gloating or malice in those alien depths. Instead, I saw a peculiar flicker of something I might almost label concern. It was preposterous. We were enemies. Yet, the way she looked at me stirred a strange disquiet in me. With surprising gentleness, she reached into her case and removed a device. It looked like a scanner of some sort, and as she moved it slowly along my body, I felt a light tingle wash over me, accompanied by a series of soft beeping sounds. I tried to pull away, but the strength for even that small gesture was gone. Resentment flared in me. This was it, the probing, the prelude to whatever torment she had in store. After a long moment, she drew back the device, stowing it carefully in the case. Then, in a move that left me utterly bewildered, she sat down. Not in a dominant position, but simply crossed her legs on the ground a short distance away. As I watched, she opened another compartment of the case, producing a small, sealed pouch of what appeared to be liquid. She tore it open and took a long swig. Easy, easy. She muttered to herself, the words meaningless to me, but spoken in a tone of self-reassurance. Then, she looked at me again. Can you understand me? She asked. Her voice, free of the translator box the warriors used, was surprisingly melodic. I found that I could understand her, though with difficulty. Human languages weren't something we were extensively taught. Basic phrases for surrender, demands, and threats, of course. But this. This was different. Still, it was clear she was attempting communication. I offered nothing in reply. This felt like a charade, a game to delay the inevitable. Don't worry, I'm not here to hurt you, she continued, her voice soft, almost pleading. I want to help. Her words cut through the haze of pain and resignation. Help? From a human. The notion was so absurd that for a moment, I suspected a trick, a ploy to lure me into vulnerability. Yet, her demeanor remained calm, and those strange blue eyes were wide and earnest. A low, almost pathetic whine escaped me. My voice, hoarse and ragged, surprised even myself. You lie, I rasped. Even producing these few words seemed to take a monumental effort. Humans were the enemies, the invaders, the relentless aggressors. They didn't help, they didn't show mercy. No, she insisted, her voice firm but devoid of any hostility. I saw you, saw what happened. Your friends. She swallowed, her smooth brow creasing slightly. The shift in her body language, a subtly slumped posture, conveyed a weight I didn't fully understand, but it suggested a shared sense of loss with which I was intimately familiar. The memory of my cohort pulsed anew, Kari's vibrant shell, Vera's silent efficiency. My mandibles clicked in a mournful rhythm without my bidding. It seemed this human could understand, at least in part, what I was enduring. Yet, that empathy only deepened my distrust. She held up her hands again, those universal symbols of peace. I'm a medic, she explained, her words slow and precise as if she were speaking to a simpleton. 
She pointed at her strange green garment, which bore a symbol I hadn't noticed before, a curious intertwining of a serpent and a staff, in a stark, bright red. We fix what's hurt. We heal. Heal. It was a concept I understood, of course. Our elders possessed that knowledge, could repair damaged tissue and organs if the injury wasn't too severe. But the notion of extending that care to the enemy, to me, bordered on lunacy. I sank lower, my antennae drooping in exhaustion. Why? The single word tore at my vocal membranes, and I coughed, a wet, gurgling sound. She seemed to consider this for a long moment, her head tilting slightly to the side in a curious avian manner. Because... It's the right thing to do, she finally said. Because seeing someone hurt, no matter who they are, and being able to help. Well, it wouldn't feel right to do anything else. Perhaps she expected me to understand, but I did not. The concept of compassion without benefit, of aiding an enemy, was simply alien to my entire way of being. We existed in a state of near-constant expansion, driven by survival, by the need to acquire and defend resources for the continuation of the swarm. This kindness, for the sake of kindness itself, reeked of weakness, of a risky inefficiency that would do many individual foolish enough to indulge in it. Sensing my lack of comprehension, she changed tactics. Look, she said, pointing at the gruesome mess of my abdomen, I know how that looks. I know your type. Chitinous exoskeleton, segmented body, regenerative capabilities. You're probably thinking it'll mend itself eventually, right? She correctly identified some of our physiology, more than the frontline warriors usually picked up in the heat of battle. Perhaps that bolstered her confidence slightly. I could only manage a faint nod. Though my kind possessed impressive restorative abilities, there were limits. Injuries of this magnitude required time, specialized nutrients, and the care of our elders to properly mend. None of which I had out here. Well, she continued, a note of grim determination entering her voice, it won't. Not that badly, and not out here. You've got internal ruptures. Fluid loss. Shock is probably setting in. She shifted, reaching for her small case once more. I'm trained, I have supplies. It's a long shot, but I can stabilize you, can probably even close the worst of the damage enough to buy you some time. Time. It was a precious commodity, and I'd wasted too much of it already wallowing in self-pity and distrust. I was dying. That was a certainty. Perhaps this human, this strange medic creature, could at least forestall the inevitable. Was the slim chance of extended survival worth the risk of her doing? Whatever it was she planned to do. The alternative was bleak and clear. Instincts shrieked at me to resist, to fight, even in my weakened state. But another part of me, a small, curious part I'd never acknowledged before, wondered. What would it feel like, to be mended by the touch of the enemy? With a trembling sigh that shifted the damp earth beneath me, I signaled my acquiescence, a slight lowering of my head, a gesture that had been drilled into us as a sign of surrender. The human medic reacted instantly, her previous hesitation replaced by a determined energy. She moved closer, a dizzying scent of ozone and something strangely floral washing over me from her skin. With surprising deftness, she extracted what looked like a small roll of semi-transparent material and a pair of thin, flexible gloves from the case. Donning the gloves, she then began to unroll the material, positioning it beneath my wounded abdomen with swift, practiced motions. This might sting a little, she warned. True to her word, I felt a sharp burning sensation course through my body as she started to apply a substance directly to the leaking wound. It was agony on par with the initial injury, and I hissed, thrashing weakly against the cool ground. I know, I know, she soothed, her voice nearly drowned out by my own pained cries. Just hold still, it'll be over soon. Her touch was surprisingly gentle, her fingers moving with a speed and precision that seemed at odds with her soft exterior. With each deft press, each application of strange ointments and sprays, I felt an unfamiliar sensation. It wasn't the knitting of tissue, the regrowth of my natural armor that I was accustomed to, but rather a stabilizing coolness, a stemming of the tide of my life essence. When the initial burst of pain subsided, I lay panting, my entire form buzzing in protest. Yet, the ground beneath me no longer grew slick with my vital fluids. The leaking had slowed, then ceased entirely. It was a small victory, a tiny reprieve, yet it was undeniable. 
She continued working with quiet focus, weaving a strange, translucent dressing over the worst of the damage. It felt tight, binding, foreign upon my abused carapace. I watched as she retrieved more gadgets from her case, small, flashing devices that she attached directly to my flesh with cool gel. With each touch, each beep of her strange instruments, the disquiet ward with a reluctant spark of hope. When she was finally done, she sat back, surveying her handiwork with a critical eye. I couldn't read much on her face, a mixture of fatigue and guarded optimism. That should hold, she muttered, seemingly to herself. I managed to stop the worst of the internal bleeding. The rest. She trailed off, a slight frown marring her features. She offered me the pouch from which she'd drunk earlier. I had it warily. Was it poison? Some sort of final torment. Yet, I craved moisture. My rasping throat burned with a desperate thirst. Hesitantly, I extended a claw and punctured the flimsy container, allowing the cool liquid to spill into my mouth. It was sweet, with a tangy aftertaste, utterly unlike anything I'd consumed before. Yet, it felt revitalizing, a jolt against the encroaching lethargy. And so, I found myself in the most perplexing of situations, lying wounded in a battlefield, my body a patchwork of my natural resilience and the ministrations of a human medic. The absurdity of it threatened to overwhelm me. Exhaustion clawed at me, but a strange sense of restless energy thrummed beneath it. The medic, having done all she could in the field, moved a short distance away, collapsing onto the scorched ground. She pulled out another pouch of liquid, this time taking small, careful sips. You should rest, she offered, her voice slightly strained. Your body will start to repair itself. It won't be fast, but you're not going to. She seemed to search for a word that didn't exist in her language, finally settling on expire right away. The word echoed in the heavy silence that had descended upon us, a silence broken only by the soft crackling of distant fires. The medic was right. I could feel it, a slow, sluggish mending process beginning deep within me, fueled by the adrenaline crash and whatever substances she had poured into my wounds. I would survive a while longer. The question was, what then? My gaze drifted to her. She sat with her knees drawn up, staring across the ruined landscape, a bleakness shadowing her eyes. In the fading light of the dual sunsets, she seemed small, vulnerable. It occurred to me then that she was alone as well. Had her kind abandoned her? Or was she, like me, the sole survivor of some terrible clash? Unbidden, the memories of my cohort rose again. Their shattered carapaces, their dimming eyes. I had felt only anger before, a thirst for retribution. Yet, observing my sworn enemy alone in the twilight, a sliver of a strange new emotion crept in. It was not pity, not exactly, but something adjacent to it, a stirring I couldn't fully reconcile. You. My raspy voice startled even myself. You have others. A. Group to return to. The medic glanced at me, surprise flickering across her face. My unit, she confirmed, a hint of longing lacing her voice. They're stationed not far from here, a field hospital. That's where I was going before I saw. She gestured helplessly at the carnage surrounding us. She could have continued her journey, yet she chose to stop, to help me. The medic's strange sense of duty, her compassion for her own and even for the alien enemy, continued to defy my understanding. I had always assumed the humans ruthless, a single-minded force bent on conquest. This one woman shattered that image. Why? I questioned again, my voice raspy. The word held more weight this time, laden with a genuine curiosity I never expected to feel toward one of them. She regarded me with those intent blue eyes for a long, pensive moment. Maybe. She began slowly, it's because we're not so different after all. A bitter retort rose to my lips. I wanted to deny it, to argue the fundamental differences between our races, but the truth was I felt those differences blurring. At this moment, stripped of weapons, of purpose, of our respective swarms, we were just two beings clinging to life against the odds in a war-torn wasteland. Different, I croaked, testing the word, but. Maybe the same. She offered me a faint smile, a flicker of light amidst the desolation. That depends, she said, on what you choose to do next. And that's when the plot twisted. The low rumble I'd been dismissing as distant thunder intensified into a roar. Snapping my head around, I saw a sight that chilled my core. 
A vast, writhing mass charged out of the encroaching darkness, not sleek human ships or armored figures, but a horde of my own kind. The swarm, relentless and insatiable, was not done with this desolate world. They descended upon the battlefield, drawn, perhaps, by the scent of our spilled fluids or some other signal I was too injured to decipher. The medic scrambled to her feet, her eyes wide with alarm. She reached for the weapon I now realized she'd carefully placed a distance away when treating me, a precaution, no doubt. My own instincts screamed at me to do the same, to take whatever defenses remained to me and rejoin my kin, to meet this fresh onslaught as a warrior should. Yet, a knot of indecision tightened in my gut. It was not fear, nor the lingering weakness from my wounds. It was a bizarre sense of kinship. A kinship with the vulnerable human who risked her own safety to salvage what remained of mine. If I joined the swarm now, it would mean her doom. The same doom I would have readily embraced for her just a short time before. The choice was stark, brutal, and utterly upended everything I'd ever known. Did I revert to the unquestioning obedience ingrained in me by the hive mind? Or did I embrace this strange, burgeoning sense of individuality sparked by the actions of this improbable alien medic? The swarm drew closer. They wouldn't recognize me, hurt and tainted with strange human substances as I was. They would not see a wounded comrade, but an intruder, an obstacle. And in that instant, the most astonishing realization hit me, for the first time in my life, I didn't want them to. The ground thrummed with the oncoming horde. They moved not with the organized, strategic advance of a battle force, but with the chaotic frenzy of a monstrous scavenging party. My antennae twitched, picking up the familiar scent of fear and aggression, the telltale signs of the swarm's bloodlust. I could picture their gleaming carapaces, the twitching pincers, the clicking of ravenous mandibles closing in on their newly discovered prize. The medic staggered back, eyes widening in a mix of horror and grim determination. She fumbled with her weapon, its mechanisms foreign to her, clearly meant for offense rather than the kind of healing she had performed on me. You need to go, I choked out the words, surprised by the conviction behind them. Her gaze locked with mine, searching for something, in order to follow, perhaps? I couldn't give her that. This was no battle where a commander could shout instructions, could strategize their way to victory. This was a choice that had to be hers, and hers alone. Listen, I continued, my words tumbling out with ragged urgency, your people, your field hospital. You can warn them. Tell them what's coming. A strangled sound escaped her, halfway between a laugh and a sob. Warn them. You think they don't know. You think this is news to us. She gestured wildly at the ruined battlefield, the remnants of her comrades, no doubt. We're losing. This whole damn planet, it's... She cut herself off, but the admission hung in the air, heavy and undeniable. My kind, with our superior numbers, our relentless drive, were overwhelming the human forces. If a lone medic out here on a mercy mission was this aware, then the situation was dire indeed. Realization dawned, not as a strategic assessment, but as a gut-wrenching wave of horror. I had been so lost in my own personal struggle for survival that I'd completely ignored the larger context. I wasn't the only one clinging to life by a threat on this desolate battlefield. I was just the one who'd been given a sliver of a chance by the enemy itself. The swarm was almost upon us. I could distinguish individual forms in the writhing mass now, could almost feel the phantom pain of their claws tearing into my flesh as they mistakenly identified me as another human meal. The medic looked at me, a desperate, hunted expression on her face. In that moment, I saw the same struggle reflected back at me. She was a healer, meant to preserve life, yet circumstance thrust a weapon into her hands. Would she fight? Would she flee? Or would she do something far more unexpected, far more human? Don't worry about me, I rasped, my voice barely above a whisper. Go. It was a plea driven not by self-preservation, but by a strange, twisted loyalty I barely recognized in myself. It was also a gamble. If my kind scented another human, perhaps their bloodlust would temporarily outweigh their confusion about my state. The medic might, just might, have a chance to slip away amidst the chaos. She hesitated, a flicker of doubt warring with a determined gleam in her eye. Then, in a move so swift it bordered on instinctual, she did the unthinkable. She tossed her weapon aside. It landed with a dull thud a few feet away from us. 
They won't hurt one of their own, she said, her voice surprisingly steady. Maybe they'll even try to fix you. Her face twisted in a pained smile. Seems silly, after all of this, but maybe there's hope. If your kind can see me. See this. Well, that's a weapon of a different sort, isn't it? I could only stare at her in stunned silence. She was using my own physiology, my wounds bound by her hand, as a shield. Risking her life on the slimmest chance that the swarm might recognize their own handiwork in me, and perhaps, just perhaps, a crack of doubt might flicker through the mindless hunger. The first of the oncoming horde lunged at her, its chitinous claws outstretched, its mandibles snapping. She screamed, a defiant echo against the monstrous chittering. And then they were upon her, a seething mass. And I. I did nothing. Unable to help, unable to even turn away. My newly stabilized body throbbed in protest as I strained against imaginary bindings. Some primal instinct demanded I fight by her side, that we meet our doom together. Yet, that same strange loyalty, born in a moment of shared pain under alien suns, kept me rooted to the spot. A wave of nausea washed over me. I had always assumed the swarm was implacable, that once we picked a target, we did not stop until it was eradicated. Yet, they hesitated. It wasn't recognition, not exactly. Merely a dull confusion slowing their ravenous actions. They poked and prodded at the human medic, the scent of me clinging to her, a bewildering deterrent. And amidst the monstrous clicking and snapping, I swore I heard her voice. Weak, gasping, but unbroken. See. She choked, see what you can do. And as the swarm continued its halting, confused assault, unable to fully devour or completely abandon their intended prey, an impossible question burned in my mind. Could my merciless brethren, the beings I'd fought alongside without hesitation for my entire existence, could they be capable of learning mercy?